Hi guys, how are you today? I'm Josh. I'm from a company called Fidalgo. So, Spooky called a Zinger, Aristocrat took Project Madness and Buffalo Studios to play together. They're three of my favorite success stories over the last 12 months, from the last 2013. But I want to talk to you today about a success story that you might not have heard of. It's about a company called Pacific Interactive and how Bidalgo worked with them to help put them amongst the names I mentioned earlier to become the leading independent social casino developer in the world. Their product house of fun. It's available on iOS, Android, tablet, mobile, and Facebook. It was Facebook where we started to work with them to promote their application. And we'd built, we'd had the time to show them our experience, our expertise, and how we can help to scale and drive the results. Within nine months, Bidago helped increase their RPU by 700%. <coughs> the ROI by 350% increase, and that's all at scale. One million users a quarter, which is great for an independent developer. But before we go on to tell you about how we did it, or the launch of um, House of Funds app, I want to talk to you a little bit about Bidalgo. So Bidalgo is a story, it's a nice story. It's, you know, a lot of us grow up and we want to become firemen, firewomen, lifeguards, but we realize that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna pay the bills, unfortunately, in today's world. So then we think that we wanna build our own business. We wanna build a business with our friends. We wanna build a business with our friends and our friends can each have their own division to help build this success, successful company that will help the world. But it doesn't always work out like that. And a lot of people say that going into business with your friends doesn't work. But that wasn't the case with Bidago. Bidago is the story of four friends, including two brothers, who launched a company in 2010. A year later, it had been recognized and rewarded by Facebook with what's called a Facebook PMD badge. PMD stands for Preferred Marketing Development. And for those that don't know, Facebook give out this badge to companies that they believe can add value to advertisers looking to advertise on Facebook platform, whether it's to help them achieve their business objective or to scale. Three years on, we're offering managed and fully managed services cross-platform. We're talking mobile, tablet, web, social. It was one of the brothers with his background at 888 where he was there for over 10 years that he brought his ROI mentality and he embedded it deep into Bidalgo. Everything we do is ROI focused for our clients with purely direct response, acquisition, re-engagement and re-monetization focused. When I say re-monetization, I, I mean, you know, it's not just about re-engaging with your, with your users. You want to help push them to help achieve the business objective that you built the game for, for them to posit, to posit, for them to pay within the game. Last year was all about big data, and Bidago collect a lot of data on their clients' users, and we use that data to find the juicy insights, those nuggets to understand our clients' users' LTV, to help understand if they put in X now, what while they'll get back, and in what time. Bidago Focus, and are one of the leading partners for the casino, social casino, social gaming, and mobile app space. <coughs> but enough about Bidago, let's move back to Pacific Interactive. So, it was February last year, around this time last year, that we launched their mobile app. And it's interesting to point out that this was also the time that Facebook launched their revolutionary ad type, the mobile app install ad. This completely changed the mobile advertising world. We all know that the mobile advertising world is so segmented with different, different advertising channels to work on. And so Pacific Interactive came to us to help them build their strategy, their mobile strategy. They didn't know which channel would work for them, so we helped to build their strategy with the objective to help them drive them into the top charts and become a prof profitable company within six months. So there's three features with this ad that I want to point out. Let me find the laser. There we go. The direct response install now button. Facebook has got 
a perception. It's got a stereotype or there's a myth out there that Facebook is purely a branding platform. It's good for likes, it's good for driving conversation, engagement, but it's not good to drive a specific action. But Facebook are trying to change that, and they did that with this ad type. Install now, it helps the user to go directly to the app store to download the ad without having to leave Facebook. So it's direct response. It's positioned in the most engaging place in the Facebook platform. It's the newsfeed. The newsfeed is home to over 950 million users a month. Nearly one billion users every month spend their time in this position on the Facebook app. Talking about time, 914 minutes a month. Phenomenal amount of time. So you've got, it's in the most engaging place on the Facebook platform. It's got a direct response. It's also, it's got a social element. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it shows the rating of the application and also how many friends are playing it. This helps to take away the friction, the anxiety of the user looking at the, this ad and give them just a bit of incentive, just to help push them over the edge to, or over the line to, to install the app. It's th these, three, these three features that really helped Facebook to become a truly mobile company. They are, they are a mobile company now. They said a couple of months ago that 53% of their revenues come from mobile. And it's because of that one specific ad type that I mentioned earlier. The mobile app install ad. But it's not just about what's going on on the front and what you can see. It's about what's going on in the background. And the, what you need to understand is I've just been in the Indie Developer Lounge and they were talking about um, acquisition and how they don't believe there's, there's a platform out there where they can, they can find their users. I don't agree to that. I think that if you're able to use a platform like Facebook that it can help you go deeper into the users, so not just by targeting them by age, by country, but also by similar applications that they're playing. Competitors' apps, their likes and interests. Also the levels they've reached within their application. Once if they've purchased, let's, let's say they've purchased virtual currency to go to the next level, or to even enhance their gaming experience. You can target them on that. But what you also need to do is you need to test thousands of different combinations, the content, the targeting, different targetings. And Bidaga are able to test thousands of different combinations and then shift the budget to the most successful micro segment. And that's very important. So after we, after we combine the micro targeting, the optimizing to these highly engaged users that you built your apps for, and we combine it with a Facebook mobile app ad, how did that contribute to the business objective? Well, I said earlier I want to take them into the charts, and it's easy to break into the charts. You can drive, you can use incentivized traffic, you can drive up, but unfortunately you'll drop as quickly as you'll rise. What this is showing is the two most competitive countries in the social casino space, Australia and the US. As you can see, we didn't just penetrate the charts, we stayed there. It shows consistency, the quality of users that we were driving. And that's all within six months. If you, if you want, feel free to look at the charts now and we're still there. Again, it's consistency, it's quality of the users that we're driving. So we achieved our first part of the objective. The second, become profitable. Since we started the campaign in February last year, Within nine months, sorry, within six months, we'd driven a 1,400% increase in revenues. How do we do that, though, is the question. Okay, so I've just been, you know, today I've, I've, I've listened to a lot of great lectures. Over the last couple of years, I've listened to some great lectures. And a lot of them, a lot of them are all about the same thing. They're all about increasing the CTRs and decreasing your CPIs. I just heard someone say, if a platform can't allow me to drive a user at 50 cents, then I'm going to move platforms. But what happens if that platform has your user and you just need to pay a bit more to grab them, to get them, to help them install? I would say go for it. I believe paying more is better, as long as you're optimizing towards ROI. If you, can, if you pay you know, four, five, six, even $7, we, I have clients I'm paying $7 an install for. But the, the ROI 
if you're measuring on a week zero, week one, week two basis, it's increasing your results by two, three, four times as much as if you would focus on just your CPIs and maxing your CPIs. Because what at the end of the day, what effect does that have on your bottom line? How does it affect your ROI? You need to be looking at what matters, your business objectives, your bottom line and ROI. For the skeptics out there that are wondering, you know, where all this where all this came from, where the growth, you know, was it really Facebook? Pacific Interactive now have a multi-million dollar budget. They didn't at the beginning because every dollar mattered for them. We needed to make sure that we put it in the right places for them. But this is showing that their multi-million dollar budgets, 80, sorry, 70 to 85% of those budgets are going towards Facebook. And it's driving the results that they want compared to other mobile ad networks. So thank you, listen. Three things to take away today. Facebook is no longer a branding platform. It is the platform for mobile acquisition and ROI at scale. But you need to find the right partner, the partner that you can work with. You focus on developing your games, and you need to find the partner that can help understand the right channels for you, the right marketing channels, and that can help you scale and drive your, your um, clients towards ROI. Focus on ROI. As I said, focus on what matters. Don't max your CPIs when if you know a platform has your users, pay a little bit more for those engaged users because at the end of the day, they will go through your sales funnel and drive and achieve the results you want them to achieve. FTDs, deposits, transactions. Thank you. Sure, we're gonna have some questions here. Standing room only, well done. Uh, uh, who has the, uh, the first question? Brock? Bitcoin, I don't know, to be honest, mate. I really don't know yet. Well, you get, you, you'll probably have a number of clients in the Bitcoin ecosystem that would <laughs> like to hire you for your services to advertise their products. Um, uh, there's no one out here buying media that doesn't think they can do a better job or would like to achieve a better job, and will you get a chance to ask those questions? Anybody? All right, well, uh, I'll start with, a, uh, I guess, a couple. Uh, what are you seeing right now in terms of uh, 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 CPAs for sort of subscale and versus, and as, as those companies are scaling up to the large numbers that you've seen, how are the CPAs or the cost per install changing? And how, and, and how is that varying between various devices? Well, we, we all know that iOS is more expensive to, to drive users from, but when it comes to the CPA or the CPIs, it, it depends per application. Every app is completely different. Some are new, some are old, some are very different um, in regards to the game, their funnels, the way they operate. So it's extremely di difficult to put a general CPI or CPA on it. It really, really varies. And that's what a lot of companies are doing now. They're really trying to change their game or change the, the mechanics of the game so that it's, it's different, it stands out. And I would say, you don't necessarily need to do that. Just focus on whether it's a slots game. Focus on making it an incredible slots game rather than being different because that, that's what users want. They want a slot game. They don't want a, a slot game that's a poker game, that's a bingo game. They want a slot game. They want a bloody good slots game. And uh, so seeing as this is a, a casino discussion, are you, what, are you seeing any variants that you can, can speak to in terms of user acquisition, whether it were slots, bingo, poker, or again, is it a, is it a similar answer? Similar answer. If you know, I can give you more specifics, but um, I'd need to understand the, the the actual ads or the sorry, the actual games in a bit more detail to be able to give you more specifics. And, uh, are you working with any real money operators? A few, yes. And uh, and how are you seeing the, the the differences between those sectors? It's a completely different world. Real money to to social. Um, Real money people thought that, you know, it's, it's the same. They, they've built some great games and they can just quickly go into social and then drive the same users and the same revenues, but they're finding it's a completely different audience. Yeah, in the case of social, it's highly competitive through the, uh, through the Facebook channel. Um, in, 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 the, uh, in the area of real money, is that a, a channel that's been mined uh, to the degree that social has, or is that more of a sort of greenfield opportunity for real money operators? I think... 
we were, were, were driving real money users from Facebook to, you know, whether it be a Facebook application, a real money Facebook application, or a real money application on mobile or web. We're doing it, and it's, it's, it's working well. Um, but it's, th there's a lot of difficulties when it comes to like tracking and integration and stuff like that. But it's, it's, it's not as competitive as social, I would say, right now. So that brings me to a convergence question. So when you're advertising on the Facebook platform for real money applications, are you targeting users that play social casino games, and are you having any success in doing that? That's a good question. Um, yes, we are targeting um, users that play social games, but it's, it's not as many social games as we would do if it, would, if it were a social game. It's very specific social casino games, very specific users and interests. And yes, you're, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, that will increase the CPI. So the, the challenge is trying to find the right combination of social games that users are playing that have similar um, capabilities or, or likelihood to, to maybe convert them or that they also are also a real money player. Because they're, they're different users. Some play, you know, social people, social games are there for the entertainment, whereas, you know, real money, it's, it's a completely different user. So, so will you target, for example, uh, a double down, you know, Casino player for a real money, uh, uh, a real money sort of gaming opportunity. Depends what the app, what the app is. Yeah. And, and, but in, and in those cases, uh, what other data sets are you seeing in terms of uh, information about that user, things that they might have liked, or are there any other data points that you've identified uh, that you can share with the audience here, where uh, you're you're saying, I want to go into the Facebook platform. How do I identify players that are willing to play real money, and you know? One might be looking at social casino content that they consume, and naturally there's a lot of other data points that you're able to mine as a PMD. And are there any sort of, call it not obvious things that you've identified that we might find interesting? Yeah, I think that's a, another good question. And I'd say, it's, I'd say it's, it's, it really does vary from application, but that's why you need um, an optimization or performance technology and the algorithms that can help to, under, to, to find those nuggets and then target them more often. So I can give you one example. I've got a client, um, obviously a casino client, that you know it, we, ha we had the normal demographics that we were targeting, a country, a gender, and a specific age group. And our algorithm found that that particular segment liked country music. So it then added country music to the micro-targeting, and you saw a three times increase in, in ROI from it. So yes, we are seeing trends, but it's, again, it's specific per app, app because of the algorithms. That's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, has that spurred any questions? Anyone in the audience? Well, I don't want to feel like I I'm grilling you, so we'll, 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 let this, we'll let this one end. Thank you so much. Thank you.